feel free to spread the word. I'm going to just cut to the chase and give you Isai. Mm -hmm. um, again, I want to repeat and thank you guys for showing up. It's really hard to compete with, uh, you know, imagine, I mean, uh, computer apes and uh, transforming <laughs> people. Well, we have a transformer of our own in this place. And it was an amazing transformation that happened in real life. Uh, when we met Harmony, Harmony was pre-transition, and by the end of the film, uh, at least by, by, by the e end of the edit, Harmony is, went from a he to a she, and uh, is turned into quite a little celebrity, I might say, getting amazing reviews for what I would say was very personal, intimate work for a first-time actor, actress now. Uh, how did you guys like it? Did you feel? Okay, good. For me, it was uh, it was an experience to to work on something that you know this is why we do movies. It's not just to to distract. It's actually to help people understand each other better, to really better connect us to what is our human condition. So, if there's any questions, if, if there are any statements, uh, please feel free. Thank you so much for all the folks. We have some people here that uh, worked on the film as well. Zach, uh, stand up as well. Zach made sure that our production ran on time and on budget. Um, anyway, please ask away if uh, if you'd like, and trust me, it's nice and cool out there. We'll, we'll be right out there. <laughs> yes, sir. I love the town. I, I love the town. I was wondering what attracted you to it. Well, what attracted me was um, the fact that it's a movie about real people. It's based on a real story inspired by the, uh, a family member of the director, director writer, who he saw this family who loved each other very much slowly deteriorate because of the father's inability to cope with the realities that were uh, evolving. Uh, and when he comes back home, uh, it, it just it makes him apoplectic, and I just. You know, there's a lot of gangster movies out there, there's a lot of movies that are genre films, but when you find a film like this that could actually help humanity evolve, I really think if enough people see this, it will just open up attitudes and save some family relationship and in certain cases save some lives. You all heard about the young teenage uh, transgendered, uh, well, I'm not sure if it's transgender or transvestite that was shot in the valley, eighth grade shot because he was wearing female clothes in school. I mean, what kind of a world? I mean, is this the freedom that our soldiers are fighting for? We've got to do something about the, the level of, of viciousness and ignorance that uh, it's getting too high. And movies like this help us understand and love each other. That's what it's all about. All you need is love is actually the, the message of this thing because even though my character went away, he did something right. He, he, he brought his baby back home. You know, and I think a lot of men can identify with the feeling of like Mighty Joe Young, like you're sinking, but if you can hold your family up, you've done something well. You've done something right. So that's what attracted me, the humanistic power of this film and its ability to change minds, hopefully, and hearts. How difficult was it for the a develop? I'm always fascinated by developing teens that can play a developing teen, whether they're developing it, changing genders or just teen, teenage years are a are, are, are struggle anyway. But just how difficult was it for a developing teen to play a developing teen? Well, I got to say, you know, uh, Harmony never acted before, was uh, rigorous, rigorously coached by the director. We worked together for a couple of weeks before we shot. Because we wanted her to feel, I mean, she's the linchpin of this movie. Um, if that performance wasn't authentic and, and, and you know, gut-wrenching and, and real, you know, it would have been a waste of time. And the director really took a chance writing a film that hinged on someone that he didn't know existed. That's the key, you know, that's what's so wild about this business. He wrote this film and then said, oh man. <laughs> what have I done? I've really got myself, you know, painted in a corner. And uh, he was at the Q Fest, uh, Pride Fest in Queens, and, you know, was talking to what he thought was a young man at a booth, and he said, listen, you know, we're looking for this person, you know, didn't have to have experience, but it would help, uh, actor, actress, transgender, 
it's a beautiful story and, and Farmy took off her glasses and says, I want to audition. And he said, the director says he saw the most beautiful face and those beautiful eyes looking at him, angelic. And he said, sure. And got to there, you know, on time, did, the, did what he had to do at that time to um, really give us the, the faith that this could actually come, come true. When I first saw it, I was amazed because you take a chance on a first-time film director and, and often 99 out of 100 times, it's just it's a nice try. But I think uh, in this case, Rashad not only met our expectations, but exceeded them. This film works on the, in a subliminal kind of a, uh, in a way that you can't see it coming, but you care. You care about these people, for better or for worse. So I don't even know if I answered your question, but I'm, I'm just going on and on. Yes, sir? Is the movie going to be available on DVD? Well, if enough people see it, I, I sure as hope uh, so. But the key for us here is to make sure people see it on those big opening weekends because that's what that's what the distributors, I mean, the, the, the studios, the people, the, the exhibitors care about. If people actually show up to, to experience this amongst each other, it's special. I, of course, it will show up on DVD, but the better it does now, the better it does here, the more, you know, financing it'll have to, to go wide. But this, I think, should be required viewing in certain, you know, junior high schools, per se, or, or older teens are. Um, there were some scenes that I, I predict would make straight men uncomfortable, and actually I was told in the last year, man, the guy says, I was uncomfortable and I'm gay, because this is a different, it, you know, you can't assume gay folks can understand the transgender experience. And, you know, sexual identity is different than sexual orientation, or gender identity, anyway. So, um, I hope it goes, but what's really important is, you know, it's a war out there. You have big corporations drowning out, taking up all the shelf space with movies that, frankly, you know, don't add much to, to, to the bigger conversation. And we have to struggle to stay alive, and you know what? I love it. I love getting out here, meeting, pressing the flesh. I don't care if, if there's five people or 500. It doesn't matter. What matters is you made the time to come here. You actually bought these tickets. You are helping us stay alive, and hopefully more films like this will, will, will show up. Because in our communities, call it Latin, maybe uh, or alternative gender, we don't get budgets. There's no money. You know, oh, well, you people won't go out and see it. But what is our people? This is a universal story. At Sundance, I had little old ladies coming up to me and saying they really appreciated this experience. It opened their eyes. So, I mean, not, you know, not that little old ladies are, you know, outside of the, of the norm, but the reality is this reaches across its typical, you know, uh, what you would call anticipated uh, de demographics. Yes, sir. Matt? Um, I really enjoyed the film. And I know you guys opened in New York last week. I wondered how this film, um, like how the Latino community was embraced it and how like, New York City embraced it. New York City was gangbusters. It was wonderful, especially the first weekend. We, we established ourselves as the number one indie film in the nation. Thank you. Okay, number one. Now, there's a Kathy out here. Um, we're at the Angelica, and we're in Times Square and in the Bronx. You know, I have a personal feeling that our community is embarrassed by this issue. So it's not something that they're running, dying to go see, yo, watch, yo, let's check out that movie about that transgender dude. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's, it's just not that kind of thing. But I think that people like Enrique are the most important audience to get in there. These are the people that need to see this movie. But they're not going to know about it until everybody else is, oh, you got to watch this. Until their ladies, their girlfriends, or maybe uh, low-down boyfriends drag them to the theater. <laughs> but uh, down low, whatever. Um, go down. <laughs> the point is that it is, you know, again, a war, and I, 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 I enlist all of you to join us in our efforts to keep heartfelt drama alive. Well, 
Thank you. Uh, I would like to quote you to my mom. Actually, <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, you know, it is, it is a bit, bit of a risk, but what's life about if you don't take a good risk? If you li live your life comfortably, you, you know, you're missing out. And that's, uh, that's why I tell people, you know, if you're uncomfortable at certain scenes, um, then it means the movie's working. Because too many of us are comfortable, actually comfortably numb. And this film, I think, reconnects us, reconnects us to our humanity, our ability to love someone. I mean, at the end of this movie, you you love harmony. It doesn't matter what your background, you care. The genius, I think, of this film, when I saw it, I was like, wow, brilliant. In the very first scene where you see harmony negotiating her first time and actually, you know, going forth, that's the scene where I tell my straight friends, like, oh, you know, you might cringe a little bit here, but deal with it. It's not overtly graphic, but you know, this is this is the reality. By the end of the film, when yours truly, Dr. Know Nothing, <laughs> tries to do it himself and, 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 and tries to share what he believes, maybe some sort of thing, when he takes him to the hooker, I found that a lot more disturbing than the first scene. Isn't that funny? In life, we're taught that, you know, this is what you do, young man. You bring him, hey, here, have fun, son. But in this case, it was so obvious that he was raping his own child through a hooker. There's no other way I could describe it. You're traumatizing a person who does not belong there. So for folks that were uncomfortable early, I think by the end of that, they wish it were the other way around. They're like, oh, please, leave her alone already. And that's what I wish many parents would just relax. You know, it, it really, you could be the straightest person in the world. Your child is going to be your child. It has nothing to do with you. It has to do with love. And if you can love your child no matter what, then this will be a better world. There will be less pain, believe me. question. Um, the improvisation, there was some, uh, we worked for weeks so that Harmony could feel comfortable, and frankly for us as actors, you know, it, it's, it's different when you walk on the set and you, you figure it all out there in the moment, which is usually what television often does, you know, because of the pacing. And then when you have time to work on it, a few weeks to live and have these scenes and try to find something beyond the stereotype, beyond the cliché, but keeping it real. Now, this isn't a whitewash. So it was difficult in the sense that we didn't have as much yet. You never have enough time to prepare. But the fact that we did, I think, lent this, this film a, um, a trajectory that it feels like these people know each other. They have history. They blend into their neighborhood. The neighbor Bronx is a character in this movie. You know, it, it, it really, you know, Rashad Ernesto Green is our director's name. NYU uh, graduate. I heard Spike Lee tweeted uh, about it to get support because Spike Lee was a mentor to Rashad. He studied under him at NYU. And, um, you know, how, how tough was it uh, or, or the budget? Uh, the difference was we had time to, 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 to live, but it was like run and gun. It was ridiculous. You think you're hot now? Imagine the Bronx in the middle of the day. No air conditioning in the production office, no air conditioning where we're shooting. It's like, you know, dry, dry, do the scene before you sweat it up again. Uh, but it had a really good feeling of like, like guerrilla filmmaking, like, like we're at war, you know, I, there was very little turnover. People had to be, you know, if you couldn't keep up with this, they had to be pushed away, but nobody said, I'm not taking this anymore, even though it was very stressful. And I think that's the nature of what the mission of the movie is. It was such a human, it's, you know, we're not trying to sell toys here. We're selling deep ideas. We're selling compassion. We're selling the human condition. Remember that? You know, it's, uh, it shouldn't be relegated to little indie films. Yes,
Thank you. Oh my gosh. And the acting was so beautiful. You were incredible. And if you ever heard this film, you can think that was really She was amazing. Uh, really great editor and um, again, this isn't the movie we should, there were scenes that aren't there. There's stuff that, you know, we wish we could have shot, but what ended up there conveyed everything we wanted to. So, I, I thank you so much for that. And, then, and one more gentleman? Or, okay. Uh, how you, uh, it's, uh, yeah, quick, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll say like everyone, beautiful work, particularly your last monologue to uh, our music. I'm curious what you shot on and how many cameras they used when they shot. It's a red and a uh, single camera. We, we, we wish we could have gotten more, but it was run and gun and, um, yeah, digital. Um, I wish I could give you more technical stuff. No, 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 the director good. knows. Good. Yes, and, and oh, how does one know when a movie is edited well? It's edited well, which is a great question. It flows. You follow it. You don't have to struggle and go, wait, where was I? It just, the cuts, it, there's a certain frequency of cuts. There's a certain lack of frequency of cuts. When it, when it lets you breathe, when it doesn't rush. You know, editing is really, it, it, it's a, a re, in my opinion, it's a reflection of your mental synapse process. So when you see, when you cut from one to another, it's like you turning your head going, uh-huh, uh-huh. That's why you can't cross the line because you're, it's a perspective. And when an editor works really well, you just can't help but to get engrossed in the story. You can only think about it after the fact. <laughs> and uh, Zach, oh, hey, one more. <laughs> I was just frustrated that in the movie when I see everybody up and I have absolutely no idea of who these people are. Could, could you please tell us who? Uh, I'm blanking right now. In memory of who? Two people at the end. Who are the two people at the end? In memory of. Does anybody remember a name? I've got, I think people passed away, but I'm not sure. I wasn't involved in that decision. But once again, really, thank you. Thank you for coming out. Thank you for being part of our weekend here. And uh, we'll be here again. And uh, please, fill up these theaters so that these folks can invite us back.